It was a Monday at about 12 o'clock noon, a week and a half before Pesach. It was a few hours before my father was put onto the respirator. And I called my mother to see how things were doing, how everyone, how, what, was, what was going on. I could tell right away that something was wrong. Something, something was bothering my mother. And my mother was obviously exhausted physically and emotionally from my father just been hospitalized the day before, but I sensed there was something else. Something else was bothering my mother. I asked, I asked my mother, Mommy, what's the problem? What happened? And she said, I just got off of the phone with Tati about 20 minutes ago, and he told me that the doctor told him that he's probably going to die. That's what the doctor said. My mother said, how could that be? We're in touch with the doctors, we're in touch with the nurses, that's not what they said. And my mother frantically called the nurse in the room and said, what happened? What did they tell my husband? And she said, no, that's, that's not what happened. We're thinking about maybe putting him on the respirator, his situation is deteriorating, and we need his consent. So the doctor came in and asked your husband, if we would need to, does he agree to be put on the respirator? And, my, and your husband said, and what if I don't? And he said, then you'll probably die. So that's what they said. But of course, we hope he's going to be put on the respirator, and we're confident that he'll be healthy and he'll get better. And my mother didn't know what to do. She had to call back my father and tell him what really happened, what was hard, would he believe it or not. I said, don't worry, mommy, I'll call Tati. And I called him and I explained that I know what you thought happened. That's not really what happened. They said that Amir Tashem, they hope you'll be healthy and you'll get better. And they're very hopeful and they're very positive. But they just said, if you need to be put on the respirator and you don't agree, then chas v'shalom, who knows what will happen. My father said, well, one more time, you can tell me again. He was very confused at that point. And I repeated again a second time and a third time. And finally, my father said, I'm very confused. It's hard for me to understand. But just tell me, what, what do they really think? What are the doctors saying? I said, they're saying that everything's going to be good. They're confident. They hope everything will work out. And that was the last conversation that we had before my father was put onto the respirator. And the truth is, looking back now, now that we know everything that we know, the truth is that the lungs that were infected with the COVID virus didn't react to the respirator the way an affected lungs usually reacts. And from that age bracket of people over 70 that were infected with the COVID virus, that put on the respirator, ruba de ruba, most of them nebuch, were never extubated. And the truth was, even though my father heard something that was never said, but what he perceived was really accurate. That in his situation, that he was at that point, really it didn't look very good. It didn't look very good. And that we're here today, and my father is healthy, and he has back his koiches, and he's able to run his regular day and say shiurim and be part of the koil and do everything that he does, is a tremendous toiver that HaKadosh Baruch Hu did for us. And we're maminim b'nei maminim, and we all believe that although the Malach HaMavis was hovering over my father's bed in Regions Hospital, it was our tefillahs, it was our kabbalahs, it was all this chusim that we piled up that at the end of the day saved my father. Every day at 2 o'clock, the Gibber family would get together on the phone conference to say Tehillim. And the intensity of those tefillahs, the bechiyas, the crying that was heard over the phone, it was so intense, I don't think I ever experienced a tefillah like that. Even Ni'il and Yom Kippur couldn't compare to that. And we begged Hashem, we daven to Hashem, please give us our father back. We have so much more to learn from him. We have so much more to gain from him. We have so many more experiences we want to share with him. And our children have so much more to learn from their Zaydi. And our children have so many more experiences that they need to share with their Zaydi. And our father has so much more to learn, so much more to to be Mechadish. Sfarami has to write, we beg the Kaddish Baruch we need, we need our father back. And every night, the Kailo and the community got together on their conference call. And they said to Hillel, and they begged, you all begged the Kaddish Baruch Please, we need the Rosh Kailo back. We need Rabbi Gibber back. We have so much more to learn from him. He has so much more to teach us. His work isn't finished. We beg you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, please let us have the Rosh Kailo back. And there was one night that the Sift of Long Beach arranged a terrorist fila for my father and for one other person. We had over 700 calls into that terrorist fila. And we said to Hillem, and Abiruch Emotion spoke, and we davened. And Yehuda, my brother, he told all the people in our family that, that we should all be makabal something for the Rishchus of the Bush Lema for Tati. 
And my mother reached out to many people and asked them to be makabal, to be moichel, someone that they were never able to be moichel. And that should be as chos for Israel Shalayim, and many people responded to that. And my father described that when he was on the respirator and he started becoming conscious again, and there wasn't much he could do, and he wanted to do something as a schos for his refuah shalayim, his own refuah shalayim, to be extubated. He said he spent hours concentrating on the sheish mitzvahs hatzmidiyos, which was the only thing he could do at that point, to think about those mitzvahs. In the schos, that in that schos, he should be able to get off of the respirator and have a refuah shalayim. And when my father was first taken off the respirator, the kailah arranged virtual shiurim, and one day, the mechotin of David Shostel said a shir, and one day his brother Rabbi Leif said a shir, and one day I said a shir, and that Torah was a schos for the Rufu Shleim of my father, and that, the Shemei HaTfilah, Kodesh Baruch who listens to our Tfilas, heard our davenings, he heard our Tehillim, he listened to us, he answered us, and Baruch Hashem, because of that, we have my father back today, and today we get together, just like then we got together to beg Hashem for the Yeshua, Today we come together, now we come together to thank Hashem and to proclaim in front of everybody that we recognize that it was Hashem's hand that pulled my father out of this situation and brought the Yeshua about. We all know the Gemara Nidorim, Dafnun, that talks about Rabbi Kiva who married Barte the Kabbalah Savu, he married the daughter of Kabul Savu was one of the richest, the three richest people in Yushalayim at that time. And the Gemara in Gittin describes his wealth, and he lived in luxury, and that was the home that Rachel grew up in. But when she married Akiva, she married Rabbi Akiva, her father made a nether and said she can't get any pleasure, any benefit from his property, from his possessions. And she went from riches to rags to dire poverty. And the Gemara describes the poverty have a goni bebeitivna. They would sleep in a house with straw on the floor. They couldn't even afford beds. And the Gemara says that one day Leo came to his idmi nosha and he appeared to them in the form of a person, of a human being. Vavikari above and he was screaming, he was calling by the door to the house. And he said, and he asked, does anyone have a little bit of straw? A little bit of straw, I need some straw. The eldest itzi, my wife had a baby and we don't have anything to sleep on. She needs to have a comfortable sleep. And we don't have straw. And it says Rabbi Kiva turned to his wife and he said, Chazi Gavra, Tafilu Tivna You see, there's a person who doesn't even have straw. He has absolutely nothing. And the Gemara goes on to say that Amr Lay, his wife said to him, Zil Kare Beirav. Go to the base Madrash, learn Torah, and become a Tamachach. And it's not clear what's the connection. It seems that because of this story with Elio, because of that, Rocho told Akiva to go learn Torah. What, what does one have to do with that? It seems that the pshat's like this. Human nature is when we have something, and we always had it, and everyone has it, we take it for granted. We don't appreciate it. It doesn't bring us any pleasure, any joy. We take it for granted. Every night when Rachel went to sleep on the floor on the hay, she said, everyone has hay. Who doesn't have hay? It didn't give her any pleasure. She didn't appreciate it. She felt she had nothing. Absolutely nothing. And she wasn't ready to send Rabbi Kiva to go to the base Madrash. She needed to better her situation a little bit. He had to provide for her. Maybe after she had a bed and she had some furniture, then he could go and learn. But now they had to change the situation. But then once she was Chazi Gavra da Filu Tivna Lesley, she saw someone that doesn't even have straw. That night when she went to sleep, she said, Baruch Hashem, I'm not sleeping on a hard floor. At least I have straw. She didn't take it for granted. And then she was able to tell Rabbi Kiva, I have enough. She was with Samech Bechelka. She was able to appreciate the Tev and the straw. And she said, you could go and learn the base Medrash. I gained a new perspective. I don't take anything for granted. Everything is special. Right? And the experience that we just experienced, seeing my father, that every breath was an effort. He was on oxygen, on a respirator. Now, a breath of air can't be taken for granted. I'll call Nishim Nishim, like Chazal say, call on Hashem, we have to thank Hashem for every breath of air, every day that we're healthy, every hour that we're healthy, every minute, nothing can be taken for granted. We have to gain a new perspective from this. And when my father first came home from the hospital, he told me, you don't know how weak I was in the hospital. There's a button on the bed that if you press the button, the nurse comes. And I didn't even have enough strength to press the button. I couldn't press it. I wasn't strong enough to press it. When they gave me a drink, when I was off the respirator, my father told me. And I had a straw, so I could sip the straw. I couldn't even get the straw to my mouth. I would miss my, I couldn't get it to my mouth. And now, Baruch Hashem, he regained his strength, 
through physical therapy. My father had to relearn how to stand up, how to walk, and Baruch Hashem and gain everything back. And now, every time we have a drink, and we put a straw to our mouth, we have to be able to thank Hashem for the straw. We have to thank Hashem for everything. We can't take anything for granted. And B'Shem, my whole family, the Mishbacha, we want to express a Kara to the whole community, to everyone who's here, everyone who came here tonight, for all of your support and all of your help through this situation, through this very trying situation. But Be'ikr, mainly for your tefillahs, because that's really, at the end of the day, what saved my father. We really feel like that. And we thank you for davening. We thank you for all the Kabbalahs that you made. But the main hoidon, the main reason why we came here tonight was to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to realize that it's a matana to have our father back. And every part of our life is a matana from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a special Yeshua that Hashem sent us. And we daven, we continue to daven. During the three weeks, a time of churban, a time of b'chi, a time of mourning, that Hashem should be mahapich and change that zman me'eva liyamtiv, the sasin of the simcha. He should send the ultimate Yeshua and we should be zoicha, all of us together, together with my father, together with all of Klai Yisrael, to be makabal p'nei m'shich t'kein of the main. Thank you very much. How's the sound? Much better. I would say we'd see the video.